So I'm a software engineer building SaaS applications, and I'm getting ready to launch my second SaaS here in the coming week. But I have a couple of things that I want to button up before the launch. So that's what I'm going to do today. It's a nice kind of relaxing Sunday, uh, except for the fact that I have to finish these things. So I guess it's actually kind of stressful, but stressful in a good way. I've already procrastinated a lot today. It's already 1.15. So I'm going to make a list of the things that I need to accomplish for today. And then I'm going to start doing them. And by the way, I'm building Dev Dispatch, which is a real-time job board for remote US-based software engineers. And if you're interested in signing up for the waitlist, I will leave a link down in the description. All right, so I think I've mostly figured out what I want to do today. It essentially revolves around letting people know that the app actually exists. So over the past couple of weeks, I have had folks been able to sign up for a waitlist. Unfortunately, I have not emailed anybody yet, mostly because I'm working with a new email sending service and I haven't really gotten around to testing it out yet. So I've got a couple of my buddies who signed up to the email list and I'm gonna send them test emails to make sure that things actually hit their inbox and they look how I expect them to look. So yeah, the first big thing that I really wanna take care of is all around emails. Second thing that I wanna do is the actual scraping service that I am running uh, is not on the final schedule that I would like it to be on when it's actually live. Currently I have my scraper set to run every two hours and that is not frequent enough in order to get this real-time aspect that I'm looking for, especially during business hours. As I've been running this over the past month or so, I realized that companies really don't post jobs on the weekends or after business hours for the most part. So I will decrease the schedule outside of business hours and of course make it more frequent in that nine to five time frame. Next up, I wanna record a very short demo video and this will live on the homepage, on the landing page for Dev Dispatch. Uh, just kind of as if you don't want to read through the content that's on the landing page, you can just watch a really quick video and get it just for what the product will give you. And then finally, if time permits, I would like to add some more companies to Dev Dispatch. Currently, I have over 100 companies on the product, but I also have another like 100 companies planned. So I like to just keep adding more and more as time goes on. So yeah, I should be able to add another 20 to 30 companies today and having somewhere around 150 companies for launch will put me in a really great place. All right, that's what I wanna do. And let's go figure out emails. All right, so first matter of business for the day is emails. And I really want to be able to send out marketing emails leading up to the launch of Dev Dispatch. And the service that I'm using in this application to send emails is Resend. And this is a new addition to my tech stack for the moment, just trying it out, making sure that things work nicely, and that ideally I don't have to pay anything actually for the, the emails that I'm trying to send out for this application. And if you haven't signed up for the waitlist yet, you're more than welcome to do so at dev-dispatch.com. And I'll leave a link down in the description for that. But back in Resend, you're able to create these broadcasts, which are marketing emails that are sent out to an email list that you have. And as you can see, I am concocting my first pre-launch email. Uh, I'm by no means an email marketer, nor do I really have any idea what I'm doing in this space, but uh, just looking at some other emails that I have gotten in the past. And it's pretty cool. They have a nice feature where you're able to send out these test emails. Um, just make sure that it looks exactly how you expect it to look. And I sent that out to a couple of my friends. I sent it to my girlfriend, sent it to myself, and everything's looking good. I'm hitting inboxes. So I'm just going to go ahead and send this live first email marketing broadcast that I've sent for this application. Uh, and hopefully everything goes well. All right, y'all, here we go. You can see sending to 88 contacts. There's an unsubscribe link included. Slide to send. Please work. Okay. Look at that, they even give you a stamp. I don't need that, I don't need a stamp. I just need my emails to be sent. But then this is pretty cool. You're able to come back over to your kind of statistics for that broadcast that was sent out and see deliverability rates currently only at 77%, but I'm assuming that they just don't send this all out at one time because that could probably flag a bunch of stuff, but we can also see that nothing is bounced. So that's also good. Um, so yeah, I think that went pretty well. Alrighty, so the next big part of the day, making sure that I have this set up correctly is the schedule that my scraping job will run on. And this is pretty important because Dev Dispatch is a real-time software engineering job board. So I really wanna make sure that this job is running as frequently as possible to make sure that I pick up new jobs in near real time. And in order to run the actual scraping job, I use a few different technologies all hosted in AWS. First is uh, I package up a Nest.js server into a Docker image and I host that on ECR. From there, I can take that um, image and essentially run it as a task in ECS, which is Elastic Container Service. And inside of Elastic Container Service, I can define different schedules for this task to run on. And that's exactly what I've done. I've 
set up three distinct schedules that I'll run this at, and that kind of depends on what time of day it is and what day of the week it is. So let's go over that real quick. Alrighty, so like I said, in order to do this, we have to define these uh, schedules for this to run on. And what's nice about most types of scheduling applications is you can take advantage of cron schedules. And actually, I just looked this up because I thought cron was an acronym for something, and it might not be. It might actually just be understood to be derived from chronos, the ancient Greek personification of time. Did not realize that. But it also might stand for command run on notice. Anyways, the schedule that I'm essentially trying to do is three different distinct schedules. So the first one is business hours. The second is weekdays, but not business hours. And the third is just weekends. Now, during business hours, I want this to be running every 30 minutes. I really want this to be as frequent as possible so that I can pick up jobs before they hit LinkedIn. Uh, outside of business hours, so I'm going to define this as like, I think, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, in Central Standard Time. Outside of those hours, I really just want this to run uh, once an hour. I think that'll be more than enough because from what I've seen so far as I've been running this over the past couple of months, not too many companies are posting jobs outside of those hours. And then finally on weekends, I'm just gonna have this run every two hours. So far from what I've seen, it has been very infrequent that anybody really posts anything on the weekends, which is good because you don't work on the weekends. And so for how this actually looks, uh, this takes six different parameters. And essentially you can specify the minutes, hours, day of the month, the month itself, the day of the week, and then the year. So an example for how this might look for the business hours case, for example, is we can just do 0, 30, meaning that this is going to run at the top of the hour and at the half hour. And this is always delimited by spaces, not by commas or dashes or anything like that. So the next parameter is hours. Um, it kind of depends on what platform you're using. This might either be UTC time, but thankfully in AWS, I'm able to use uh, my local time, so I could just use CST. So this will be 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. For the day of the week parameter, I'm able to just specify this um, uh, question mark because it, it doesn't really matter. It's really going to get overridden by this uh, day of the week parameter. Next will be a star for the month. We want this to run in all months. Next parameter is day of the week, so I want this to run Monday through Friday. And finally, the year is uh, all years. So we're just going to put another asterisk. And now we can just repeat for the other two schedules that I have. And that's pretty much it. Alrighty, so I'm starting to wrap the day up here. It's getting a little bit late. 10 30 and besides filming the demo video for the landing page which y'all really don't need to see a video of me recording a video uh, the only other thing that i wanted to do tonight is just add some more companies to dev dispatch and for that i just want to take you inside the master spreadsheet that i've been putting together of keeping track of the companies that i want to add to dev dispatch and also just keeping track of which ones i already have in the platform Alrighty, so this is the master spreadsheet that i've been working off of for the past couple of months to keep track of all the jobs that need to go into dev dispatch essentially my process for this is i'll just go through linkedin and then when i see a new job that might fit the criteria of being for a company that is remote and US based and has software engineering jobs, then I'll just chuck it into the, the bottom of the spreadsheet and then fill in some more information later. And the main pieces of information that I keep track of are the final URLs that I can point my scraper to so they can actually get jobs from. Um, so I keep track of that. I keep track of what platform they're on. So are they on like their own custom platform, which is obviously going to take a bit more effort uh, to actually scrape the jobs that I'm looking for, or are they using something managed, something like Greenhouse, which is super easy for me to just be like, oh, I already have one company that's using Greenhouse. Now I can just use pretty much the same exact code uh, to get these jobs. And if it is a custom one, how hard is it going to be for me to scrape the website? Some of them are really easy. I can actually you know, put URL parameters uh, into this URL to get me the exact jobs I'm looking for. Some will require a bit more effort. Other than that, if there are no jobs at a given time, like for example, uh, as of 723, Clever had no jobs available, no software engineering jobs available. So I'll just kind of keep track of that. And it looks like there still are no software engineering jobs. So I'll come back to that in another month or so and see if there's something posted up recently. I also like to keep track of how long it takes the scraper to do what it needs to do. For the most part, most of these take like between five and six seconds, but obviously there's some outliers. 
with some of the more custom websites like uh, Netflix definitely takes the longest, about 30 to 40 seconds for each execution. Most of the ones that are on these managed platforms are really quick to complete. And then the last thing that I like to keep track of is just a filter on the status of whether or not I have finished it and added it to Dev Dispatch. You can see at the moment we have 97, but this should be up to around maybe 130, 150 by the time it is actually launched. So I think it's definitely possible for me to hit 200 to 250 companies on the platform uh, and just really be posting as many relevant remote US-based software engineering jobs that I possibly can. All right, it's getting late and I made a lot of good progress today. Uh, I'm pretty much ready to launch. I got maybe a, a handful of things that I wanted to do just to clean a few things up. But yeah, I'm really excited to launch Dev Dispatch in just a few days. Like I said, if you want to sign up to the waitlist to be notified when it is fully launched, I'll leave a link down in the description for that. Other than that, thanks a ton for watching. I really do appreciate you going all the way through. Have a great rest of the day and I'll see you in the next one.